Para bump testing. Para bump testing. Oh, and unmute myself. All right. So this is an item waster. Uh, it has, it serves no other function. We're just uh, shooting things into the ocean uh, in order to, oh my goodness. Oh. Oh no. Um, is that what's been happening this whole time? Did... Did we just... Did we think we were destroying items when actually they were just getting placed over here? The thing is, if you, um, let's get some more super bots, shall we? Uh, the thing is, if you crash, um, delivery cannon shells into the ground, uh, it still leaves a few items behind, and our goal here is actually just to destroy items. What I did have before was a target painted on the ground over here. A little something like this. Uh, let's just make sure it's even. That's not right. Cut. Paste. Why can't I... Oh, I think I just have to do it this way. There we go. Um, so I had something a little bit like this with the cannons uh, shooting over here, away from where they're going to damage anything. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, what happens if I launch these into the water? And I launched a few of them over here and noted, aha, no items. And what I didn't notice, a hey, so JMO, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what I didn't notice is apparently if you shoot these things at the water, um, that's odd. Why are we... Oh, I forgot to turn them on. Okay. So I think what I forgot to take into account... Yep, here it is. So we can't actually destroy these items entirely just by shooting them into the water even though you'd be forgiven for thinking that's what happens if you look over here. So I guess we're going back to plan... I wouldn't call it plan A, but plan B. Whereas that was plan C. Um, 
we're going to need to planning on destroying items yes um because with core mining uh unless you happen to use items at exactly the same pace uh that they're getting produced ratio wise um what's going to eventually happen is you're going to produce more copper than iron for example and you're going to run out of storage space for the copper which means you're going to um stop producing iron because the filtered outputs are going to be blocked um, and you can't really solve that problem by just having proportionally more um, storage space for copper. You have to have, like, exactly the right proportion of consumption. Or you need a way to arbitrarily destroy items. Which, as far as I know, there isn't a way to do... Um, what I was planning on doing over here earlier is if we aim all of our cannons at this spot. Also, I'm not sure what's going on with our little timer here. And this one as well. And then uh, this one. Need a copper sink, yeah. This is an everything sink, but um, basically we're just going to set up the LTN train stops to be like super, super low priority, like negative a million or something. So this is, these are the stations of last resort. Um, and I suppose we could also, we could also go to the trouble of like setting, uh, these stations to be on a network ID whereby we're never going to put like regular resource patch ores into this. Um, just the stuff that we get from... Uh, from the core mining drills, but I don't really think that matters. Only when shit locks down, they'll become active, pretty much. Like, we would have to have all of our storage full everywhere for copper before copper comes here. To be destroyed. I was thinking about setting it up so that we... Uh, we just have, like, a general drop-off, and we set recipes based on what we've got, and we maybe don't have a million delivery cannons. But I think, well, for one thing, not much throughput. For two things, this looks cool. And for three things, um... I had forgotten the other thing I was going to say. Um, so we've got this on a timer of one minute. And now I'm kind of sad that I deleted the countdown timer that I had over here. Um, but basically, we're, we're doing this on a timer so that our bots will have a chance to pick up the items that get, rem uh, that get left over here. Bring them back into the system over this way. And then, you know, not get destroyed. There's plenty of space for a lighting system based on the timer. Yes, indeed. Uh, there was one little problem. Oh, we've still got the font over here. There was one little problem I ran into. Um, when I did the timer. Uh, I was actually quite pleased. I pretty much 
built it without referencing um, another digital display. Um, that goes there, that goes there. This one's going to be each remainder 10. And this one's going to be each divided by 10. Uh, this one is each bit shifted to the right by T. And then this one is remainder 2, which just tells us if it's an odd number. So that connects to there. Um, that might look a bit cleaner with a red wire. That goes there. That goes there. And then we need the opposite. If, if we're going to do a countdown, we need 3600 uh, minus this. So we need another arithmetic. Minus T. Output T. And then... This is ticks, we need seconds, so we need uh, each divided by 60, I think. And then... font. Oop. Looks like it's working. Fantastic. The only trouble with this is, uh, this is a countdown to when the inserters will put a delivery, uh, delivery cannon capsule in here, and the actual launch starts, like, six seconds after that. Um, and I'm not sure how I can do, I was doing a bit of design of a new nuclear plant over here. I'm not sure how I can do, I want to offset this by six seconds. Um, with as few combinators as possible. But when it gets down to zero, I don't want it to say, like, 66 seconds. A hey, Evil Plum. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Why make it a fancy timer? Just have a lot of lights turning on or off based on timer value. That way more or less lights means closer to launch time. So I guess that's a lot of work. Yeah, it's always... Once you start playing with this sort of stuff, it gets a bit complicated. So the idea here is, because we're only shooting all of this once a minute, um, the bots that we have in the actual game should have time to come and pick up whatever's down here and bring it back into uh, the buffer chests. And then you know, return to RoboPorts and charge up again. Um, we need to get rid of... We need to get rid of the Super RoboPorts and Super Robots to test this properly. Although, it, we've got like a million um, robot speed upgrades as well, so we won't really get a proper test of that over here, but it might give us an idea. So we need some regular robots. Oh, I think we've still got some super logistic bots in the system. Yeah, here we go. Turn off my robot port. Um, we need some more construction bots. Oh, that's right. I actually set this up to automate it. Uh, we want a hundred regular construction bots in the system. It looks like that's what we've already got. Add six to the seconds output and then do modulo 60? Maybe. Um, obviously, normally we wouldn't be shooting all of these at once. But 
but I think we should probably actually have as many bots as there's going to be items on the ground potentially in this little robot block, I think. 60 seconds is more than enough time? Yeah, probably. We could probably do 30, depending on how it goes. In any case, um, I'd like to confirm... Uh, can I just get out of Robobot range for a minute? I... Oh, this is one weird thing that I keep running into with, um, doing the super editor with space exploration. Um, I keep finding my cheats get turned off. Just have to type it in real quick. Uh, we need some coal... And some power. Okay, so I want you to shoot over here, please. Now stop. I said now stop. No! Alright, so this is how many items. Is it exactly double what we had before, or is there a bit of randomness to it? Uh, 10, 20, 6. So do we get 13 of these every time it fires? Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Looks like it. Okay. If, um, if we're getting 13 times 32, 416, that's a lot more than I figured. Um, so that should be enough bots to, uh, do this in one go. The creative mode mod doesn't want to play nice with SE. Yeah, a little bit. So obviously these bots are much, much faster than what we've got in our game at the moment. But I think once this inserter has finished doing its thing, we should be able to get a feel for... What are you guys doing? Okay, there we go. Still going. Maybe I should have made it a stack filter. No, we need two, two filter slots for this one. Okay, there we go. Perfect timing. Well, almost perfect timing. We can almost definitely drop this down to like 30 seconds, I think. Even with the slower bots. Probably, maybe. I have to say, that looks pretty cool. Okay, so with the super fast bots... I think we need more robo ports if we want to go down to 30 seconds. No? No, I think... Okay, if we use super fast bots, we could do 30 seconds. Um... Let's change this to 1800 ticks. And over here we have to change this to 1800. Hmm. 
Okay, 30, 30 seconds might be a little bit tight when we have our slower flight time. But other than that, yeah, I think we could start it at like 45 seconds. But this is, uh, to be clear, this is assuming that like we're draining all resources at full speed, which probably is never going to happen. Can't you unresearch? Uh, I never even thought about that. Can I do it with editor mode? Show character tab in GUI. Um. If I can undo research, I have no idea how. Oh, here we go. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, bot speed. Okay. Unresearch. Alright, now we're into territory where... Um, where we're at in the actual game. Uh, we need a few labs. In fact, I think I just screwed myself a little bit. We need to go to space. Um, editor. All the delivery cannons belong to hacks. Yes, indeed. Mahalik, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You can also force research with the editor. Uh, how do I do that? this well I feel like it would possibly be easier to just jump to the uh, orbit surface and make some research right here lab I forgot how big they are. Beacon. Uh, many speed. Many more speed. And infinity chest. Power thingy. And then science. Actually, what I should have done is just, uh, well, I think using these can cause performance issues, but on the other hand, I can always just delete it. Um, why is this one having trouble? What is that? Super personal inventory? Huh? Okay, never mind. Let's, let's maybe not do that. It's being a bit strange. Just do what I should have done, or almost finished doing before. Okay. Why is this one... Oh, that doesn't line up the way I thought it did. There's your problem. That was probably the only reason why the infinity storage chest didn't do its thing. Okay. Alright, so now we've definitely got worker robot speed up to where it is in the game. Uh, let's jump back to Melvis. Placed too high again? Yes, indeed. Fuck. Oh, what the hell? Oh, I was going to say my bunk thing isn't working, but yes, it is. 
It was just slightly delayed. Actually, I wonder if it's because I've got low latency mode turned on, and I actually see that text before Mix It Up does. Okay, so what are we on now? 30 seconds? I don't think that... I think that's going to be much too quick. Yeah, I don't think our bots are going to be recharged by the time there's more jobs going. The important thing, though, is just that they don't get killed by the cannons. That's the only reason we're using this timer. The only thing that it's too quick at is not having enough charging, yeah. They seem okay so far, but I'm pretty sure some of them are, are going to run out of charge. If they're all firing. Yeah, that's true. I think by the time you have them all firing, you're going to have more bot speed. Um, we need new types of science to make that happen, but I don't think we're ever going to have them all firing at the same time. Um, pr probably. Well, I guess... I guess eventually, unless we're bottlenecking on these resources, we are going to be firing them all. In which case, we're going to need more of these, which is kind of a odd thought. We could always just have fewer core miners instead. We could probably have the storage of the ores over here at these stations talk to... Uh, the core miners and like stop the belts if this is if we're trying to get rid of literally every resource or just lower the time yeah as much as the bots aren't quite keeping up I don't foresee I don't know if they would ever actually get shot by the cannons but I think we will put this back to a minute for now. So hopefully this will be more than enough time for them to recover, even, even though some of them are low on energy already. What resource are you still gaining when you're burning every resource? Oil? Hmm... Oil we can turn into fuel and we can burn it arbitrarily. We could be doing that for coal as well. And I mean, we are making a bunch of um, uh, coal liquefaction to deal with that as well. Well, looks like the bots are well and truly getting a nice nap. So I think as much as there's a bunch of empty space over here, maybe just add some solar panels to make the most of this. Um, this is probably pretty close to the final design. How many resources are you burning? 37 per cannon shot? I believe it's a stack per cannon shot, actually. Yeah, 50 per cannon shot. So if we didn't have the timer on this, uh, this could actually do 80, per, uh, 80 coal per second. The other thing I haven't checked is, well, no, I think it's pretty likely we'd get some bots killed if we don't do this timer thing. Okay. 
Um, I might want to move this uh, target thingy a little bit. It could definitely be a bit closer to the bots. Uh oh. I can't really see what I'm doing now. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. And maybe I should just put some super bots into the mix. Of course, a lot of these bot jobs are already assigned. Don't know why there's this weird little bit missing on the left here. Oh, probably because of what the bots had already picked up, I guess. And maybe something like this. Are my cheats gone again? My cheats are gone again. I think I like the look of that a little bit better. Control Z? Yeah, maybe. Maybe that would have been quicker. Um, obviously, it doesn't automatically change where the target is. Um, I think we'll remove, like, the first three or four rows of these. See how that looks. Maybe a proper circle would be nicer. Whatever the case, this should be fine. Um, I'm a little sad that it, this doesn't quite fit our usual square of solar panels. Um, but we could definitely add a bit of solar over here, maybe. I'll worry about that later. The only thing left to worry about is setting up the LTN stations. I'll take a little break from this little project for now, though. Um, I've got a blueprint for that. We don't need it anymore. Use rails to make a proper circle and trim the excess. That's a good idea. Rail... And then concrete. At what point do I decide that it's, uh, let's just say if I can see more than a tiny bit of it, I'll fill it in. Did my cheats go again already? No. My inventory is just too full. Well, that's just rude, taking that out of my cursor. What? No.
Is that going to be pretty close? Uh, it's okay. It's a bit wonky. I think this uh, upper right corner might be pretty good. So if that goes there, and there, and there. Uh, oh, there we go. That might be better. If this coincides with um, the area of effect of the cannon damage, or pretty close to it, um, I'm going to be a little bit pleased. Oops. That's not quite right. What? what am I... Oh, my inventory is too full again. That doesn't look too bad, I don't think. Obviously it looks a bit weird, like some of the edges are blurred because of the, uh, uh, the checkerboard ground behind here. Whoa. Okay, I'm thinking if we place it here, it's probably going to be pretty safe. Let's find out. Also, can I actually target like pixel perfect or is it going to be like um, a tile or something? I'll aim for the very bottom right corner of this tile. Which should cover all the bases. Oops. was this one, wasn't it? Yeah. Cool. Much closer to the Robopods as well. I am curious to see... Oh, that's a lot of shield hit points. I am, I'm, I'm guessing I can probably just stand directly under this and be perfectly safe. Um, but I am curious to see how close I can stand to it uh, without taking damage. Let's find out if our shield hit point bar is even going to be visible first. I might have to swap out for some non-cheaty shields. Lab tiles? Lab tiles. Yes, indeed. Turn off personal robots? Sure. I need to remove the super construction robots from this network as well. Um, minute is longer than you think sometimes. And bang. <laughs> Okay, literally didn't feel anything. Uh, why don't we dump all of this stuff? Uh, is it supposed to be infinity storage or if I pick this up? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, let me just get all this extra crap out of my inventory for now. should do it. Um, get rid of the super energy shield. Get a bunch of 
high tier space exploration energy shields. 4,000. Wow. Uh, what do we got? Alright, so that is 20,000 hit points. Hopefully I'm not still underestimating how much damage this will do. Not a dent, and all items were instantly removed. <laughs> they went into my inventory? Yeah. Um, about 16 seconds until it launches. So what I did earlier was added a constant combinator right here with 6T and connected it to these things. That did synchronize it so that at zero seconds the guns were firing. Oh, there we go. Okay, so what was that? Like, I don't know, 4,000 damage or something? A little bit more, considering the regen. Um, I can probably get rid of most of these shields. And, okay, let's remove one variable at a time because... Uh, I want to see... I, I, I want to see how much damage this does on three shields. Two shields. Okay. So if I stand right in the middle of this, it drops us to about 50% shield. Now if I stand a little bit further away... We'll soon find out. Four, three, two, one. Very little damage at this range, it seems like. So this uh this circle is actually pretty accurate. Or For a safety circle. I kind of like the way that looks now, actually. Okay. Why don't we blueprint this thing? As much as I haven't bothered finishing the LTN stuff just yet. Everything else is in place. Oh, I will demonstrate what I did with the Constant Combinator earlier. So, if we go T6. And add this to these two arithmetics right here. So it's not like it's changing how fast the timer is or anything. Um, this T that it's receiving here is the actual number of seconds remaining, and then we uh, add 6 to it. Because it takes about 6 seconds once these inserters swing um, before the cannons actually fire. Oh, and why don't we get rid of our super construction bots? Alright, so we've got 418 construction bots available. Seems like they are keeping up with this pretty easily. In fact, it looks like they could handle 30 seconds. Let's give it a try. I think those are the only numbers I have to change. I'm actually rather surprised 
this is actually the bot speed that we already have, right? Kind of hard to see what... Oh, there it is. No, this is significantly faster. Uh, how do I unresearch it? Do I have to put editor on? Yeah, I do. Okay, so we got energy science pack 4. That's a bit beyond. Oh, wait a sec. No, I didn't... We're not doing research, that's not the problem. Oh, here we go. This one, and this one, and then I think that's it. Yeah, there we go. Worker Robot Speed 4. So this is what we've actually got in our game. It looks like they might actually keep up. Okay, see that actually launches at 30 after going higher than it should. With the constant combinator added. Yeah, I think we can do every 30 seconds, as long as we have plenty of bots. Bonk. Oh. These are some bots that we don't need to protect from cannons. There we go. So, we've gone through a couple of iterations. Are our bots actually managing to charge? It looks like not quite. Just barely, actually. That's cool. Um, I think I'll just remove this constant combinator, though. I would rather just have this countdown to when the inserters put things in. The only other way to do it is to try to like have a separate timer but we somehow keep synchronizing it with this one. Or we just try to set up a timer that's like this one and then synchronize it six seconds off just once somehow and hope that that stays correct despite any brownouts or anything like that. I don't like that one bit. Those are bots we need to fire from cannons into the sun. Yes, indeed. Just barely is good enough for a system set for all four resources being destroyed. Yeah, I agree. Oh, it looks like they barely can't keep up. If we're destroying all resources all the time. If. And that's at our current bot research. And we could just add more bots. And I'm skeptical that, um, even though the bots are having trouble keeping up, that any of them would actually get themselves shot. Yeah, no, this seems fine. Okay, why don't we blueprint this one? Don't need that little thing showing where the middle is. And... Just do it like so. Um, I do have a couple of cheat items in here still that don't need to be here. But also this little uh, construction area for delivery cannon capsules 
wouldn't be able to keep up with um, constantly destroying all items all at the same time. But I don't think it needs to, <laughs> frankly. I'm not even going to add storage for the uh, delivery can capsules. I think the storage space on these belts is more than enough. Okay, moving right along, let's uh, blueprint and remove the magic things. Um, what's that? Crafting combinator blueprint settings. There shouldn't be any here. Um, I'm going to remove those. Oh, and this storage chest, this is a bit weird. Um, when I first ran this little experiment, um, the bots just sat there, even though we've got uh, buffer chests requesting every single one of those items. But the moment I placed down a storage chest, they headed where they needed to go. Also, I may as well... I may as well set up a trash train over here. I think if we just put a regular train stop... If we just put a regular cha uh, train stop, it could we could squeeze it in right here, and storage chest goes here. On the off chance that we end up with items um, in this robot network that shouldn't be here. We can just do this. Uh, trash, pickup, enable, disable, anything greater than zero. So if, for example, we end up with Delivery cannon capsules in the robot network. It's going to get turned here. Uh, there's a train that will come and remove this. Cool. With Logibox flying over this part of the robot network and dying to attrition. Um, yeah, this is going to be its own separate little network. Add more RoboPorts, not bots? Um, maybe. I think this is enough in any case. Okay, let's blueprint this thing. Make sure to include the tiles. Um, I'm not going to bother with the train stop name. Actually, yeah. We should fix the train stop names. We've got this one. Um, so this is um, LDS and heat shielding drop off. Oh wait, I stopped using drop off and I'm using uh, request a chest as a symbol. It's a little bit clearer, especially when the station names line up like this on the map. This one is coal and stone. Uh, copper and explosives. Oops. Lastly, that is the last one, isn't it? Yep. Uh, copper and iron. Did we name this one right? 
Not quite. Not that copper, the other copper. Okay. Now we're ready to make a blueprint. Train stop names, tiles, and not trains. And not infinity accumulators or loaders. Why are there four? Oh, okay. Thought that was four regular train stops for a second there. I think everything else is correct. Um... I think the symbol for this one will... Oh. Wait. Can I not... There it is. Deconstruction planner. Um, item... And we'll put that in space exploration. Trash is named properly. Uh, yes indeed. Okay, I think we're ready. I'll, before I jump back into the regular game, what on earth is... Am I getting hurt by flying? What? Oh, I think I remember this. I, I vaguely recall someone mentioning that the advanced jetpacks actually drain shield energy for some reason it doesn't mention it and i probably just didn't never noticed this because it's not going to actually hurt is it doesn't seem like it i guess it's appropriate that trash doesn't fit in with station names Maybe. I can't think of an icon that I would like to use to say trash station. Um, but yeah, here is the new and improved uh, nuclear design. Um, apart from bringing the offshore pumps into the middle, which I think looks a lot nicer, um, they're also within range of the substations without me doing anything uh, special. I kind of like the way that looks on the map. Um, we're also adding some storage tanks and checking that... Uh, we're also adding some storage tanks, a few solar panels, a bunch of accumulators, and we're checking how much uh, steam we have over here. That's interesting. What's... Oh, right. I think I left this um, infinity accumulator draining a bit too much power to test it. Uh, but yeah, these inserters are all stack size 1, steam has to be less than 2.5k, we're just checking one storage tank, uh, and these lights just show us how much steam we've got. The air is hurting your face, but Self-preservation stops you from going faster than the shields can withstand. That's a pretty good explain away. I ran a little experiment with this one earlier, and if it's going from zero um, and inserting all of this fuel simultaneously, uh, even with the stack size on, um, the heat pipe at the end of this doesn't quite get to like, I don't know, 950 degrees. So you're not quite ever going to waste um, fuel with this system. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I've got that saved in a blueprint here. Yeah, much happier with that design. I, I, I really like the fact that we don't have uh, offshore pumps sticking out the edges with this version. Alright, let's jump back over to uh, the regular game. And we'll see what's going on there. 
sink mods, please. I think the last thing we were doing was... Actually, I don't remember. Oh yeah, I just patched one of these furnaces to... Um, wait until we have 100k iron plate up here before we make any steel. I can't really be bothered patching the other five like that right now. On the other hand, am I going to remember? Let's add a icon over here. Who do patch by on the spotters? Put that down there. Okay. Need some more power. I don't remember why I have 600,000 laser turrets in my inventory. It's probably got something to do with finishing the wall. Well, let's go check that out. Um, don't need quite so many RoboPorts. And... I'm not used to flying this slowly anymore. What was that? Oh, it's just... No, it is not just worms. I cannot abide by this. Okay. Any other expansions besides that one over there? They really squeezed past these exist- Oh, they just destroyed some things and left other things intact. Oh, that's- Oh, oh no. Okay, we're gonna have to do some cleanup after this. I think the main priority though at the moment, even though there's stuff behind it, is just to get that wall finished. go. I'm away. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I should probably kill those biters first. Bots, back to me, please. Back to me, please. There we go. Some automated attack drones would be pretty cool. Alright, let's keep building, shall we? Are you using Mark 1 personal roboports? I'm afraid so. Uh, I'm pretty sure we need like two more types of research to unlock the next one. Personal roboports. We actually just need material science packs. Um, I do have them researched. How do we make them? Iridium plate. I've got that. I've got iridium on the nearest moon, but I haven't tapped it yet. Significant data. I have no idea how to make that. Material catalog. I have no idea how to make that. Material insight. I have no idea how to make that. Uh, cold thermofluid. I, I think I've got a pretty good idea. I know how to make thermofluid in any case. Significant data, I'm expecting to be pretty similar to um, how we make machine learning data, like about the same complexity. But yeah, there's a few things that we need to... There's a few production chains that we need to make before we can do that. Didn't realize that space exploration changes existing research. Yeah, it takes... Uh, for the most part, it takes a lot more to get 
like the same stuff as vanilla. Uh, the road flare. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. But we're just about getting to the point where we've got Nalvis well and truly under control uh, with a flow of infinite resources and a whole lot of storage. And we're also going to be setting up uh, a machine to destroy items that we don't need anymore. Um, because the way the infinite mining works is we get like six iron and uh six iron and five copper and five stone etc uh whether we like it or not so eventually unless we're consuming at exactly the ratio those things are being produced uh we're gonna run out of storage space for something and once you do run out of storage space for something if you've got a like filtered output somewhere uh everything is going to stop so just spent a while designing a system that the entire point of its existence is literally just to waste resources. Um, luckily, LTN allows us to set priorities on train stations. So we can set the priorities for the drop-offs for those resource stations uh, incredibly low. So they'll be the last place anything goes. And then once they actually get there, we just destroy resources to make room. A Cassandra Asimov. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Jelly the Bean. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again as well. Hope you all done well today. Um, surprisingly enough, it looks like the wall is basically finished. Um, obviously, the actual wall part could be a bit more solid. I've never tried LTN. Can you make trains go to a refuel station only when fuel is low? Absolutely. Um, although the way the LTN scheduling works uh, is trains go to a depot like this one um, or this one. Uh, they go to a station that's marked as a depot and then they wait for it to be given a schedule. So if you just get your trains to get refueled at the depot, that's a pretty straightforward solution. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it is LTN. Um, I have seen a mod that let, that will have trains go to a refuel station when they are sufficiently low on fuel. Um, it might be LTN. Fuel processing, that's AAI industry. No. Be that would already. Uh, Mr. Pitt, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I feel like refueling only when they are low should be kind of vanilla. Yeah, when it comes to when it comes to certain things that you need mods to do with trains, um. There's a few things that I sh that I think you should be able to do with vanilla that you can't. Um, I would also really like to be able to. I, I, and I to be clear, I do enjoy the challenge of using the vanilla system, uh, the vanilla train system, and trying to figure out how that's all going to work. But uh, some of that difficulty is really arbitrary. Um, I would really like to be able to have a condition on a, um, I'd like to be able to have a train react to a condition and skip a station if a certain condition is met or not met. Um, there is sort of a way to do that, but not really, um, whereby if you make absolutely every one of a station that a vanilla train is scheduled for uh, inactive at the time, then uh, the train will skip that station, which is 
generally more of a problem than anything helpful. Uh, this is one of the reasons you should probably um, use train limit instead of enable disable, generally speaking. There are reasons to use enable disable instead. Got to be careful with it. Blood red, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I think we've placed all the laser turrets. That's kind of sort of the main thing, as long as we've got enough power. Is train fuel really that much trouble? I just have train fueling at a normal station and basically never think about it. Yeah, if you have it, uh, I mean, with like regular vanilla scheduling, you'll either have to have a train go to a station every single time on its schedule loop, uh, or you'll just have to make like the pickup or the drop-off station a station where the train gets refueled. I've been starting to use train limit a lot, mostly to show if a station has enough stuff for a full train. Same with offloading. With vanilla, I mean, yeah. Uh, LTN has its own issues, but it is very powerful, and you can do a lot with it. Um, I definitely firmly disagree with some of LTN's default settings, um, which I would call them newbie traps, honestly. Um, they definitely cause you to run into problems that are not exactly your fault, but other than that, I'm really liking LTN, it's really good. Hey Veldak, good to see you again, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Um, I think it's only a few of these that have been messed up by pasting blueprints on top of them again. Uh, it's important that we have a particular layout with these wires because if we have all of these laser turrets switched on all the time, we're never going to have enough power for them. The Road Flare, thank you for the follow. Scout Geek, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. As someone who wants to learn LTN, what are those newbie traps? Okay, uh, go into settings, mod settings, and under LTN, under map, um, I would strongly recommend setting, t uh, <clears throat> excuse me, setting stop timeout to zero seconds, because otherwise you're going to have trains come back to your depots with items and then the schedule basically sets uh, the, the the trains at the depots get given a schedule pretty much under the assumption that they do not have any items in them that's obviously a problem uh, so the default is if the train sits at sits at a station for two minutes it'll leave no matter what obviously there's a few use cases where that's a problem um, delivery timeout, I think the default is like 10 minutes. Uh, after 10 minutes, if a train hasn't gotten to its station, it's presumed dead, basically. The problem with this is you will... Uh, let's say you have 24 steel chests, and you're asking for iron plate. The maximum that you can fit there is 115,200. So you, you give LTN a negative signal of 115,200, uh, and also it reads the amount that's in those chests, so a positive amount there gets, you know, implicit addition and subtraction. Um, the negative number gets smaller as it's asking for fewer items. You set a, um, a request threshold so that we don't send a train unless we can fit a full train load. Um, but then you end up finding that a train is sitting at the drop-off station almost completely full. Uh, how did this happen? It turns out that 
one of your trains took more than 10 minutes to get there because of some traffic jam or something. So LTN sent another train and maybe another train and maybe another train. Um, that's obviously not what you want. So I set this pretty much to the absolute highest value I could. Maybe setting it to something like four hours would be more reasonable. But I think this is... Um, I forget exactly how many hours this is. Um, the other thing was... I think inactivity. Was it depot inactivity? No. I don't like the fact that I can't... Uh, the schedule that trains are given once they get back to the depot is just inactivity and nothing else. I wanted to give it something else as well, like train has to be empty before it leaves the depot, but that just gets overridden. Um, but I think there was also something like it's set to two seconds by default, whereby if a train is picking something up, it's got, it's asking for a certain amount of cargo and, uh, and inactivity two seconds, which means unless you set up some very clever and precise circuitry for loading the train, it's going to fill the train if it can. The inserters are going to keep swinging and that inactivity timer is going to, oh, here it is, stop timeout, maybe? No, that's not it. Um, I can't remember where it is, but I removed it. Um, finish loading? Here we go. Yeah, for some reason it doesn't have a numerical value for this. Prevents trains from leaving while inserters slash pumps are working by adding two seconds inactivity condition. That was on by default. So if we've got a train asking for... 8,000 iron plate, and it goes to pick it up, the inserters are going to keep swinging, it's going to completely fill the train, and then you're going to have a train at the drop-off station unable to completely unload. Um, and then if you combine that with stop timeout being anything but zero, it's eventually going to go back to the depot with half a train load of iron plate, and then it's going to get set to go pick something else up while it's half full of iron plate. Um, now that I stop for a few minutes to break all of this down, there's actually just this terrible mess of a combination of default settings that will absolutely give you massive problems if you're not careful. Um, I, I don't think that's a very good set of defaults, especially for someone who's just learning LTN. Um, Axivate, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I've been trying to get a two-way rail system to work, but it also gets gridlocked. I want to make it work, but I fear the train pathing may just be too dumb. Uh, Road Flare, this is actually my first playthrough where I use double-headed trains. And it's been a learning experience, and I think a very worthwhile one. Um, basically, the short answer is I strongly recommend having, uh, for example, left-hand drive, just like you would if you're not using two-headed trains. But where you take advantage of the two-headed trains is um, at train stops, not like on the main roads. So what I've actually got going on here with these roundabouts is, um, let me find somewhere a bit clearer to demonstrate it. When you go onto the roundabout, you have to approach it from left-hand drive. That's the only allowed direction in like normal areas. You can then crisscross. Uh, if you're going on the straight rails, it's only left-hand drive. However, if you go onto the roundabout, you can go clockwise or counterclockwise. And this allows us to, just like we're seeing this train right now, have a train stop right here, and a train can approach it from here, from here, and the train can leave the way it came as well. The main thing you have to watch out for is uh, my first naive 
uh, version of the highway. Um, basically just had signals on both sides everywhere and the trains could go left-hand drive or right-hand drive. And as you said correctly, um, the pathing is not smart enough to avoid creating a traffic jam with that. However, if you make it like basically like left or right hand drive, but with certain exceptions, um, then you're gonna, you're gonna find there's some advantages to that. It puts the LTN on its skin, <laughs> or it gets the default set up again. Fair enough. You can make something like that for light loads without jamming. Yeah, with for light loads, sure. I prefer to most of the time. Uh, obviously, there's exceptions for things like uh, these multi stations, uh, but when it comes to like raw resources, like iron plate, for example. Um, I think it's kind of a waste of a trip uh, to send anything less than a full train load. Um, because as much as trains have incredible throughput, um, you do end up having bottlenecks of like the actual train network itself with too many trains in motion. Um, but yeah, definitely very worthwhile uh, learning to use two-headed trains. Uh, the main thing is just only let them go both ways through intersections. Um, on, on straight rail, just treat it like it's a one-headed train. So in this case, it's left-hand drive. I think we need to place some more radars over here. Um, I thought I had placed them all... Oh, here's one. Oh yeah, there's just one missing down here. For the high throughput, one-way rails are the way to go. Well, it's less about the throughput. Um, basically, if you use double-headed trains, you can save a ton of space with... Um, with the actual train stops. And if you combine that with LTN, you can really start to get some space efficiency with multiple train stops. Um, this is my latest Omni Smelter design. Um, we're not really using uh, the washed cryonite in this instance, but this will smelt six different types of resource and it has the pickup stations for it as well so we have effectively two four six eight ten twelve train stations in this space um because with the two-way roundabouts and the double-headed trains we can have trains just come in here and leave this way in here and leave this way and so on um and we don't need like uh you know you don't need to have a bunch of rail going this way and then you turn all the way down this way with the giant corners for rail in factorio and then you go back up like this and that's not so bad if you just want one station but if you want more, it has to be kind of big, etc. Um, with LTN, you can do some clever stuff and have multiple train stops. Uh, basically, one train stop can do can be at least two stations at once. Are you getting attacked? Probably. Um, it doesn't look too serious right now. I'm only really concerned if we get attacked here before the wall is properly finished, but it looks like we've finally made it, actually. Although I should definitely clear out these biters at the back. Uh, let's... Oh, Adi is still here. And it's still got 92 shells. Fantastic. 
Let's get our combat armor on properly. Actually, that'll do. I'm just going to go and defend the artillery train. Which is mostly just entails repairing and rebuilding little bits that get damaged here. Um, we actually can't reach some of these bases, but that's okay. Still going to save us a uh, little bit of effort here. I think I can just barely kill at least one of those spawners. And while we're waiting for the biters to come knocking, let's use the navigation satellite and make sure we haven't missed any other expansions that are within our walls. Seems like we're okay. All right. Where be the biters? Right about here. There they are. Those are just worms. Okay. A hey, Zavoxifal. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, maybe I should split them up a little bit since I've got time. Where are they? I don't want to run into them abruptly. Oh, here they go. That is my plan. Like one rail, two way system. You can make something like that for light loads without jamming. Oh, the with the LTN defaults, yeah. I think I mentioned that. It's my day off from work, so nice sleeping. Nice. How about you? Yeah, uh, pretty good. I've got five days off of work ahead of me right now, and I'm very pleased about it. Um, so apart from... Uh, the usual day off and variety stream. It's going to be long Factorio streams for the next few days. Yes, indeed. Yeah, my uh, current contract is kind of winding down. Um, which, in the current context, I'm quite pleased with. I've got some money saved. I am very much looking forward to a break. Got a new job. Best paid I've ever had. Very pleased. Got the week off next week as well. Nice. Yeah, I'm probably going to take a break from uh, regular kind of paid work. Unless I find the right role that I could have uh, stability but not many hours. Which is only what I've wanted for the past 7,000 years. Um, then I'll probably be taking a break from work for a while. Hope it works out for you. Thank you. My prospects are looking pretty decent uh, in the future for getting more work from home, it seems like. So... Fingers crossed on that. I can obviously stream a lot more if I'm doing uh, work from home roles. Alright, there's one more threat in here and the rest is just... Whoa, careful. Uh, Scout Geek, thank you for the follow. Okay, I think when we kill this biter base right here, 
that is finally oh boy oh oh no oh no 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 not like this no no okay okay had to get the frequency just right for pressing the button to reactivate the jetpack that was close uh as i was saying before i got overconfident uh, once we kill this biter base right here, that should be the end of having to worry about this stuff on Nalvis anyway. Ah, much better. Close one? Yeah, a little bit. The pathing works fine with the right signaling. You basically need to use chain signals and only use regular signals at safe stopping positions. Yes. Which generally means stations, waiting bays, or passing places. I built a network like that in my last game. Low throughput since I only played up to one rocket. Yeah, you can have trains go any direction they like inside intersections. By which I mean... Places where no train is allowed to stop, no matter which direction it came in. Like here, it doesn't matter which direction the trains are allowed to go through here. Um, but in places like this, if we have trains allowed to go both ways um, all the time, we're eventually going to get a train sitting here, a train sitting here, and a train sitting here, and maybe another one here. And they're all facing each other, waiting for each other to get out of the way. Alright, so that is... Oh, I forgot to place the final radar. Done that a bit. Want to scale it up? Nice, nice. I'm very pleased with my new, uh, what is it called, city block system um, with rail. Partly a product of using double-headed trains. Well, actually, basically entirely a product of using double-headed trains. Um, but the density gets even better when you start using LTN so that you can have... Uh, two drop-offs from the one train stop. Alright, let's place our radar like so. Actually, I want to make sure it's consistent with these ones, so that'll go up here. One rail works, but only for low throughput. Um... Oh, I think I see what you mean. Yeah, like the way I've got it, where the rail that gets you around is all, like, left-hand drive. You could do right-hand drive, of course, but what I mean is uh, we don't have, like, a whole section over here that's effectively a giant intersection where the trains can go both ways. Slightly improve it by adding passing places. Blueprint? Uh, blueprints, or you can go BP, I think. I, I think, is that just on a timer? Maybe I forgot. Time to test that. Maybe I can try a double rail system where one side is both ways. Like, uh, like if you have three rails and one is left-hand drive, well, like the outside one's a left or right-hand drive, and the middle one is both ways. That sounds like the safest way to design roads in real life. Okay, I think our wall is basically finished. Oh yeah, three rails? Yeah, I mean... Maybe, like, four rails with some double in the middle. A happiness cookie. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, I'm gonna fly home. And drop off all of these extra laser turrets. 
I heard that. Wait, heard what? Um, should we build our item destroyer first, or should we build another coal liquefaction system? All right, I don't need all these laser turrets right now. Thank you very much. The capper. So the overtaking lane is both ways. Yeah, that sounds real safe IRL. <laughs> yeah, it, it actually sounds really good for Factorio though. Um, maybe even two overtaking lanes that can go both ways because those lanes are generally empty, right? So it should be fine that they can bo go both ways. Safest equals Kappa. Oh yeah, right. Definitely. Um, is this full? This is basically full. Oh, we can finally make our second coal liquefaction area without worrying about uh, this wall right here as we deconstruct it. Fantastic. Uh, I don't know if I waited to make sure that I got all my items back. But it's fine. Alright, let's uh, get rid of all of this. And I think this should still fit perfectly. It's actually a perfect square as well. I can rotate it any direction I like and it makes no difference. Although I am seeing a weird green thing up on this corner when I rotate it just so... There's not, like, one little bit of rail missing from one of these, is there? Doesn't look like it. And let's grab our... Did I? I don't think I included a radar for this one. Oh, easily remedied. I added this water. I guess we'll do the same thing this time. Since we're so close to a lake already. Let's make sure we line that up carefully. I think I'm going to need more robopods. And a lot more power. And I'm going to have to go back for some stuff I don't usually carry. That is a lot of oil. And we get a little power station as a bonus. Since we've got coal and water here anyway. Mining productivity is ticking along. 4.1k... Oh yeah, we've definitely got enough. Should probably go upstairs and set up a proper lab system. Uh, this will eventually give us uh, mining productivity 5. I could at least give it a beacon. We've got way more power um, than we need right now up here. I don't know if there's any... Okay, we've got speed modules. Speed module 3, that's the best we have right now. I don't see any beacons up here. Maybe we could make one? What do we actually need? Advanced circuit, small electric, concrete, and steel. Um, I don't see... Uh, red circuit, steel, concrete. We just need small electric motors. I think we're missing those. If I were to hypothetically put this here and say small electric motor, I don't suppose we would have all of our resources for that handy. 
No, we need copper cable. We don't have any copper up here, I don't think. Okay, no. I'm going to actually have to go up there. Well, it was worth trying. Uh, we need a whole lot of chemical plants. 64 chemical plants. 60... Well, I can, I can check what I need when I get back. You have copper up in Narvis Orbit? Oh, I do. You're right. Fantastic. Good catch. Thank you, uh, Happiness Cookie. All right. Copper wire. And... Gonna need... How many of these do we need? I can't remember what we were trying to make. Oh, we need one beacon. Um, ten small electric motors. What? Is this full? This is full. Okay. Put it in here. Almost there. I feel like maybe we should make a few more small electric motors before uh, abandoning this project. Do we have any long arms? We do, but are they in the robot network? Don't think so. Uh, why don't we just move this, put this here. Beacon. I do wish it would load for just one first. And away we go. Fantastic. Alright, um, should I leave it making a few more? We also need to... Oh, um, we need to put these beacons where the bots can get them. The easiest way to do that right now is just to deconstruct them. I think that'll do for now. And then... We can go up here, kind of. I do believe we have a bit more space platform lying around? Yes. Uh, what? I can't see what's missing here. It's three by three, right? Oh, did I just have to, like, refresh this? No. Cannot build on space platform scaffold. Oh, no. Um. Well. Turns out you can't build basic beacons in space. I don't know if you can build any beacons in space, but basic beacons are the only ones we have. So... <laughs> That whole, that entire exercise was for nothing. <laughs> Try it on the little asteroid? Uh, we could. I don't think that's gonna... Can it be placed on space platform spaceship? Can it be built on asteroid? Okay. That was a fine attempt at rules lawyering, but it didn't quite work. Welp. It was a good try. Alright, I want to make sure I place everything I can before I go back for more stuff. Herb uh, good. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, it is possible with LTN to do two fluid uh, pickups in the same 
logistic train stop, but you it's definitely much easier here to just uh, mix a solid pickup with a fluid pickup because they're never going to get contaminated even without any clever circuits. Um, you can effectively make a filter pump just by putting a circuit wire on it and then setting the condition to, for example, light oil has to be greater than zero. Um, connect that to the yellow constant combinator for LTN and it'll spit out a positive signal for light oil when it comes to pick it up. But if you get fluid in the wrong place, you're going to have a bad time. Um, definitely much easier just, just to mix uh, the solid and fluid so that we can't get that contamination. I think we've still got an example up here. Yeah, here we go. Um, this is actually a multi pickup for eight different types of fluid at the same station. Uh, let me go set my logistic requests before we have a look at it. So we need um, 64 chemical plants, 60 uh, steam engines, Uh, we're going to need half as many boilers, I believe. No, wait, a few more than that, because some of them go to the full liquefaction. So that's 35. Uh, what else? A lot of pipe. Uh, a lot more storage tanks than we normally carry, I think. And probably extra stack inserters. Okay. What were we looking at again? Oh yeah, so... Back when we were more heavily reliant on emptying trains that come to the depot because LTN kept sending them back here with stuff in them um, until we changed a few settings from the defaults. What we have over here is pretty straightforward. Um, we just... Well, it's actually the same for both the pickup and the drop-off in this instance. Uh, you don't want the fluid going to the wrong fluid output. So from this... Uh... Oh, this is actually reading train contents. It's not connected to the yellow constant combinator. So this could work for vanilla. Uh, if petroleum greater than zero, if sulfuric acid greater than zero, and so on. Um... And then over at the pickup station, we have something similar. Oh, it's actually working right now. That's really good timing. So this green wire right here, uh, 22,000 uh, crude oil. I believe that is the amount. Yep, here we go. That's the amount of crude oil this train came to pick up. Uh, that's coming as a signal from the logistic train stop output. Um, so we connect that to all of these pumps and only the ones that's, that are set to crude oil greater than zero are going to be active there. So you're not going to put the wrong fluid uh, into the train. But again, uh, it is much simpler. Instead of doing something like that that's tricky and risky and get weird things happen if you get something slightly wrong, uh, you can always just set it up so that it's impossible to get that sort of issue. All right. Uh, I didn't mean to have that request still. Let's head over and build this coal liquefaction.
and then I think once we build that, we'll start working on... We probably could have built the, uh, uh, the item destruction thing a lot quicker. But I want that one to be... I, I want to dump all of our coal into this first. Speaking of which, uh, here is our output from the pulverizers. Um, and this is this is where we see the reason why we need to delete items. Um, so when you do core mining, you get these uh, uh, core fragments. When you crush 16 of them in a pulverizer, you get 6 iron, 5 copper, 5 coal, 5 stone, uh, a 5% chance for some uranium ore, 2 vulcanite, 10 crude oil, and 50 water. Uh, ignoring the fluids for a moment, if any of these items... Uh, we're going to have to output these in some filtered fashion. We could put them all onto the same belt, and then we have uh, filters on the belt like so. Or we could have filter inserters taking from the pulverizer, for example, but you're still going to run into exactly the same problems. Um, we have a bit of a fancy system here for getting rid of multiple types of item. Uh, this is this is actually a pickup station for six different types of physical item with LTN. Uh, really, really space efficient. But ignoring that for a moment, you could have it just going to different train stops. Um, and then you wouldn't need very clever and finicky circuitry to make sure you don't have the inserters sticking out and doing the wrong thing. Um, but why is this so slow? Oh, I think we got rid of too many poor mining drills. Maybe. Oh, this one's going a lot faster. What's up with that? We've got 10,000 plus 2.6 thousand over here, but at this one that has exactly the same priorities. We've got zero and zero. That's interesting. It is less than a train load that we've got at each of these stations, though. Well, whatever the case. This is definitely incorrect. Probably this one should ha uh, mirror this one. Yeah, that's right. And that little bit of circuitry there is just designed to... Uh, we basically did a kind of compact circuit-based uh, belt balancer here. I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, the point is, why are we deleting items? If we end up with uh, 30,000 coal in these chests right here, and we don't have room for iron to reach like 8,000 so that it sends a train, then the entire thing is just going to stop if we're not consuming coal. Because we get... Uh, we don't just get infinite iron and infinite copper out of our core fragments. We get infinite iron and copper at a ratio of 6 to 5, whether we like it or not. Um, but yeah. That all seems to be chugging along at a reasonable pace. Once we get more power, we'll put more core mining drills in again. As soon as this uh, plant is built, I would like to build the new version down here. So I think I'll place that right about there. Actually, yeah, no, that'll be fine. Okay, getting a little bit distracted. I don't know why my bots were just doing nothing for a second until I moved there. I should probably finish placing this rail so the train can come. This is a great example of why you don't want that uh, train timeout, because even though the rail wasn't connected yet, LTN was trying to send a train here. 
if I forgot to place this rail for like 10 minutes, we would have had LTN assuming that that train was destroyed. And then it was, would have sent another train. That wouldn't have been a problem now, but very easy to end up with an overfilled station if that happens. I also need to grab some heavy oil um, because I finally settled on we're not going to have a train automatically get the heavy oil over here to get this thing started. We just need literally one barrel of heavy oil to kickstart uh, coal liquefaction. Um, it takes 25 heavy oil and it creates 90 heavy oil. Probably should have brought some more modules as well. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be close. So I won't need to request this, or this, or this. Uh, I think I forgot to request oil refineries. 15. And I'm going to need a barrel of heavy oil as well. I think I left a machine in place to make those. Yeah, there it is. Uh, we're also going to need a bunch of belt. Like, probably more than usual. And I think we can just leave our storage tank request on the usual number. Let's head back. Let's head back a little bit faster than this. Oh, uh, UPS is getting a little bit low. Let's hit the old performance mode, shall we? It's a little bit better. No wonder it felt so slow. Okay. I don't think I need that many more pipe. In fact, it looks like we've placed all of the pipe very nearly. All right, let's get going, shall we? On the way zero. What's happening with substations? Uh, where are we? Oh, there they are. There's no copper cable. Oh. Okay. It's all going into red circuits. Um, is this not getting made at full speed? We need stack inserters to output this stuff. And are we going to be bottlenecked on a belt now? E yes, we are. Very much so. Um, we kind of need two blue belts to support that. How much are the red circuits going to use? 72 per second. That is more than a blue belt. Um, I'd kind of like to get rid of this and do a red circuit build in the rail network, but we're not going to, that, that's not going to be a solution that just happens in five minutes. Um, we do have a bunch of copper cable over here. This is kind of a short-term solution, but...
That'll do it. There's already a request for copper cable over here. I don't see how we're possibly going to squeeze in an, an extra belt uh, for throughput of the copper wire. I think I just said copper wire, which is the satisfactory thing. This is copper cable. Satisfactory has copper wire and cable as two separate things. Okay, let's finish building our coal liquefaction system. And then I think it's about time to call it for today's stream. Just a short one since I finished, uh, since I had to work today, but, um, well, I, I will get the coal liquefaction started with a heavy oil barrel as well. Uh, but yeah, for the next five days, no more short streams. Actually, I think for the entire week, no more short streams because I'm back on a early shifts. That'll be nice. It's kind of a pros and cons out, uh, balance out pretty much perfectly with the early and late shifts for my job at the moment. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for hanging out. You are welcome. Oh. Um, is that supposed to be there? I don't think there's supposed to be... Oh, I remember why this is here. Yes, okay. That's fine. Yeah, we need... We need trains to be able to go the wrong way in these sections, just for coal liquefaction. Also gonna have to change those signals. Um, they're probably technically fine, but obviously flashing lights, not so good. Just a few more items to place. Yeah, I kind of, uh, I kind of placed this rail in what turned out to be a little bit of an awkward spot. Um, whereas if I had placed it up here, like I had done with the Omni smelters, uh, not down here, but up this way, this is, this is very straightforward with the signaling. We don't need to change much, um, but I basically had at the coal liquefaction we've got the equivalent of this down the south side and then you've got some relatively weird stuff that you have to do with the uh, other signals we basically need to make this entire section uh, an intersection because the trains have to be able to go the quote-unquote wrong way I still didn't ask for enough blue belt wow I thought 300 would be kind of excessive. Alright, let's go grab that belt and a heavy oil barrel. Heavy oil barrel. Yoink. And... The yoink. And that's going to be way more than enough. Give to me some blue belt, please. More blue belt, please. Alright, that should do it. And we're going to need some power as well. Actually, I didn't think of that before. We can... It seems like you slowed down afterwards, but we can actually gain a bunch of speed with all the jetpacks and then swap them out on the way to our destination. Okay, and heavy oil. 
Where is my heavy oil? Um, there it is. All right. So that is more than enough to get coal liquefaction started. We also need some water here. Um, apparently there's a train trying to deliver water. What? Oh no, there's a train trying to deliver iron plate. Why is this one not moving? It's only got 7.3k. I think something weird happened over here. All right, let's just send this one home. I think it was one of those weird things that happens when we have an LTN train stop before a train can reach it. Uh, anyway, we need to make sure... that we have water. Let's just do this. And I wonder if we could put an offshore pump uh, right about here. Yes, perfect. That'll actually get supplied by the train and bot system. Since I don't think I can handcraft it right now. Oh, it's already there. Fantastic. Or did I not realize I was carrying some? No, I don't think I did. Alright, so now we have no water here, actually. Um, because there's a one-way pump in the way. I didn't actually think of that. I might actually just get rid of it in this instance. And that water is going to come around this way as well. Okay. Let's uh, see who's who else is streaming Factorio today. What is going on with this? Oh, I see. Okay. Twitch. Uh, Alan VH, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, Diablo streaming. Might return the favor. Haven't raided Diablo for a minute. That's an easy pick. All right, thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Finished a four-rail intersection where two rails are bi-directional. Nice. Let me know how it turns out. Thanks for the stream. See you next time. No worries. Uh, so tomorrow is going to be a long stream, uh, finishing at the same time, but six hours. Uh, thank you all for watching. Do take care. I'll see you next time. And I think I forgot to say, check out the Discord or the Blueprints if you're interested. If you have questions or requests, or if there's anything broken, by all means, let me know. Let's drop in on Diablo. Tato says...